Sheen Shots. Yeah, boy. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Sheen Shots channel. Outward is a very fun game that rewards exploration by offering you cool loot and materials that can either be sold for money or made into useful items. The problem is, this exploration often has you pitted up against fearsome foes who can very quickly kill you. The best way to prevent this is to buy better gear, skills, and potions. But you need quite a bit of silver to do that. While it may seem very difficult to gain this silver, it simply isn't. You just need to look in the right places. I'm about to show you one of the best money farming methods out there, and the one I tend to use most often. Better yet, I'm going to show you how to do it on a basic starting character that has almost nothing. You can get buttloads of money through this process, and it's very, very safe compared to other strats. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Since I am showing this on a beginning character, I will mention that you should always loot Sierzo, get your tribal favor on the beach, and then talk to the three NPCs to progress the storyline. This will get you three rations for free, as well as a decent backpack from one of the vendors. On the bottom right section of your map, you'll find an exit to another region. This is Enmerker Forest, and we need to head there immediately. There are a variety of things you can do in this first region to get money, but we want something faster. As soon as you enter Enmerker Forest, you'll need to look for a tower. It's called the Dolmen Crypt, and it will be the first structure you run into, so don't worry about missing it. Enter here and pull this single lever one time. Avoid the two ghosts and the arcane elemental. Beware, as the elemental is a sniper enemy and will deal massive damage to you from quite a distance. Luckily, we have plenty of terrain to hide behind and pulling that lever takes no time at all. Exit the cave and head towards Berg. This is the large town in this region and it can be found by sort of hugging the left side of the cliffs here. Once in town, we need two things a better backpack, and a pickaxe. You'll probably already have a pickaxe from the beginning of the game, but if you don't, you can always buy one from the blacksmith. Shopkeeper Pleal has a prospector backpack. I highly recommend you buy this as we will need the extra room for loot. If you currently can't afford it, go ahead and buy another nomad backpack. Drop this second backpack on the ground and place everything in it other than some water, stamina food, and your pickaxe. We'll come back for this stuff later, but we need all the room we can get. Now, leave town, and instead of crossing the bridge right in front of you, take a right and cross the bridge in that direction. There's a tree on this island called Tree Husk. Enter here. Now, there are two enemies in this cave. If you walk forward, you may be able to get the bug on the top to move down and fight the beast golem. Don't fight either if you're weak, but the lever we pulled earlier opened up a helpful weapon called Merton's Fire Poker. Grab it and leave the cave while those two beasts battle it out. Next, we will head up towards the Cabal of Wind Temple. I recommend picking up a shield sometime if you find one as it can be helpful for the rest of the run, but it isn't necessary. Now, many of us already understand how this temple works, so I will just briefly describe it. Avoid the Immaculate at the entrance, and once inside there will be a large pit area. There's a lever here which when pulled twice explodes everything inside. So the idea is we gain the enemy's attention and bring them into the middle. Pull the lever and everything dies. Easy peasy. What we're looking for here are a few things. Four shell horrors and one unique enemy guard this place. Killing all of them opens a yellow barrier, which grants an expensive item as well as an ornate chest. Killing shell horrors also gives us chitin and ghost dies, which we will need later. Smaller horrors also wander around this place and there are a crap ton of them. These guys play medium range and will seem to not follow you. As long as you gain their attention at some point, they will eventually wander into the middle arena. Just play this carefully and deal with one enemy at a time if you have to. There's one shell horror in the middle upon entering the dungeon, one in the right side, and two in the back. One of the horrors in the back is actually above an elevator. 
Luckily, you can block his attacks and he'll follow you down, letting you still kill him in the pit. This shell horror can actually fall off of the window you see him from the other side, but that is either rare or only possible with the bow. The elevator trick is quite simple to do if you block. Once the yellow barrier is down, you can collect a ton of good loot from the horrors and anything else you might find. Exit the dungeon and take a right. There's a small structure over here which has one palladium vein. Mine it as we need multiple pieces of palladium for later. Head down to the bottom right side of your map under the burning tree. Another palladium scrap can be found here bringing us up to two. Also in this location we have the hive men. These drop occult remains every time they are killed which is nice. If you can't find any of these enemies, simply enter the hive and immediately exit. Do not drop into the dungeon, as you will have to deal with all kinds of nasty stuff. This process sort of loads them in if they aren't already. Merton's fire poker comes in handy here because it will set enemies on fire in just a few hits. Hive men are very weak to fire, letting you hit them and then run away like a coward waiting for them to die. Kill at least two of these guys and head back to Berg. On your way back, there is another palladium vein on the side of a cliff. This vein's location is a bit harder to describe, but you'll be able to see another part of the hive structure from here to give you some sort of reference. Once in Berg, we need to craft some weapons. Two handed fang weapons can be crafted with an iron weapon, two predator bones, and one linen cloth. You'll have a good amount of money from selling the weapon and loot from that ornate chest earlier, so that should not be a problem here. We need four fang weapons in total. It doesn't matter which ones you craft as long as they're the two-handed. One-handed weapons sell for much less. Now take the fang weapons and craft them with one horror chitin, one occult remains, and one palladium scrap. This gets you horror weapons, which make us a ton of money. This is essentially the strategy here. Horror weapons sell for a lot and are very easy to craft in this fashion, but we don't want to sell them here. And since we only have two occult remains, we can't even make more than two right now anyway. Save any of the materials mentioned earlier for now, but make sure you craft at least one horror spear. It will come in handy soon. Also, do not sell the ghost eyes. Ever. Again, we need those for later. Make sure you have four rations and leave Enmerker Forest and head out into the desert. The Abrasar Desert is nuts and a great place to make money. First, we need a few more materials, so hug that right side there until you reach more hives. Three bugmen or walking hive are usually wandering around in this canyon. You need to kill all three for more occult remains. Luckily, they're also weak to poison and the horror spear we just crafted applies extreme poison. So it eats away at these guys quickly, and the spear is very long, letting you stay safe. At this point, we will have collected a total of 5 occult remains and are good to move on. After leaving this canyon, we continue to hug the right, we grab one palladium vein, and then find ourselves up against the scourge enemies again. Kill the little dudes quickly, as the spear is an amazing weapon to have so early in the game. You can now loot the ornate chest here, which will once again give us decent loot to sell. There's a shell horror here, which I recommend you kill also for another piece of chitin. Unfortunately, it's very hot in the desert, meaning you'll have no stamina basically, and shell horrors usually are pretty tough. Enter the Immaculate's Cave here so that you can rest and cool down. Then you can easily kill the horror, even if you're terrible at combat. Block until he stops attacking, then do one single poke at a time. 
keep doing this until the extreme poison is applied and run away. You can also just kill him, but again, not all of us are great at the combat. The terrain here is interesting, and you can manage to get the big guy stuck in this tent. That poison will just keep eating away at him while you're safe and sound. The poison may run out after a while, but you can always reapply it. This guy can be taken care of so easily that it's another win for us. There are also two additional palladium veins in this little section of the map, so be sure to grab them before heading into Levant. Now that we've made it to town, you're free to sell the loot you've earned and craft as many horror weapons as possible. This will earn you quite a bit of gold, and the strategy can be repeated over and over throughout the game. Enemies respawn after 7 days spent outside a region, so you could earn a lot of money doing this. Levant is also the only place you should be selling these horror weapons because the price is much higher here. So at this point, you should have a really nice amount of silver and gold. Fortunately, that was only step one of this guide, and we haven't even finished it up yet. Still, don't sell those ghost eyes, and make sure you have at least 250 silver. Buy all the pressure plates from the engineer here and head into the slums. Sticks can teach you to use pressure plate traps for 50 silver, so don't forget to pick that up. Also, give Pigeon Eye, the man up on the building here, 200 silver. This will open up a chest that contains decent loot. You can craft another horror weapon from the iron spear in this chest, making the 200 silver way worth it. Now leave town and take a right. Make your way to the electric lab and get ready to use those pressure plates. Now the electric lab is set up as a sort of puzzle, but luckily your pal Sheen Shots has it solved for you and will make it super, super simple. Go down the elevator. Get off and pull this lever. Get back on the elevator and look towards the open room. Pull the lever and dodge forwards into a secret area. We need something here, but beware, a beast golem guards the ramp and will kill you quickly. Luckily, we have plenty of pressure plate traps and those golems are weak to, you guessed it, ethereal damage, which those ghost eyes deal. So place down at least two pressure plate traps with ghost eyes. I used one in the video, but that was definitely a mistake. Now be careful in the next room after this guy's dead, as there's a trap on the top of the stairs. Hold the lever behind this bookcase and another secret area is revealed. We need at least 10 pressure plate traps for later, so just run past the two golems here. Hold this lever and it's finally safe to leave. Follow the path I take here and we will head back up to where that elevator originally led us. The lever we last pulled actually rotated the elevator, allowing us to access another part of this dungeon. Run past the golems here and go up that elevator, not before grabbing the palladium scrap. Thank you. 
get off the elevator and pull this lever. Then get on again and you will officially be at the very top of the system. Exit through the door into the outside. Here you will find three powerful sword golems that have been upgraded. These three are wearing headgear that disrupts a magical contraption in this area. Killing them will grant us access to that magical contraption. Four pressure plate traps each with one ghost eye should do the trick. Otherwise, these guys are very tough. They deal a lot of impact and even with a shield, I was still not able to stand there for long. But as long as you use four pressure plate traps with ghost eyes, you'll have no trouble at all. One golem spawns near the entrance and two more spawn in the very back end of the area here. They're spread apart so you shouldn't have to fight more than one at a time. Now, killing these guys also drops loot which we need to grab. Each of them will drop a broken rapier. Take two of these and craft them with a crystal powder and a palladium scrap. At this point, we have plenty of palladium and the crystal powder drops from, well, these guys. This gives you a golem rapier which will sell nicely back in town. Also, grab the whirlig spear. It sells for 900 but is unique and will not respawn. Re-enter the building and interact with the purple orb here. Exit outside once again and the ornate chest farm will be unlocked. This is a series of ornate chests that were locked up quite a while ago. One of them is right in this area, but the rest are scattered around the desert. This one also offers a SAR stone, which is very, very rare. Ornate chests often drop very expensive loot, and five of them will grant you some decent money. I'm going to show you the exact path I take to get all five, but be aware this stuff gets really heavy. Mephino's trade backpack is always the best for money farming, but otherwise, make a stop in town before attempting this. These ornate chests will have loot respawn in them after area reset which means you need to spend seven days outside the region, just like the horror weapon farm. So every time you come back to the desert, you can loot these again, essentially giving you an additional way to make infinite silver as you progress and outward.
After I got back to town and sold everything, I ended up with 51 gold and 2,500 silver. Considering this is a starting character with almost nothing, that's a crazy amount of gold. And on top of that, we put ourselves in very little danger overall. If you play your cards right, you will only take one or two hits of damage the entire run. Now once you have all the houses bought in each town, you can save up any materials you find along the journey. Eventually, you could end up with enough materials to make multiple horror weapons without even entering the Cabal Temple. This process is extremely efficient and has us going one place to the next, getting exactly what we need. I found it to be very beneficial in my playthroughs of the game. Now, endgame content is a bit different, as you'll need lots and lots of money to build new Sirocco. This is the final quest in Outward which requires you to have already beaten your faction quest to even start it. It basically has you build a town from scratch, and while it's really cool, you need a massive amount of gold. So once you reach the end game, you can do two additional things to earn some money. Clear out caves in Caldera. The volcanic region of Outward is the richest by far. I mean, it's not even close. Every cave has multiple chests and at least one ornate chest. On top of that, Caldera drops the best selling items from these chests. So you can rack up a lot of silver by looting one cave at a time. Glass weapons are the items you'll be looking for. These sell for a crazy amount and have a high chance to drop in these ornate chests. So that's generally how I make money in endgame. But there's also something you can do with leftover particles. Elemental particles are used to enchant items and outward. You will collect many as you progress through the game and you should save them up. Once you reach Caldera, however, you don't really need to be enchanting, as you'll probably already have that stuff done. Combine any leftover particles with Dreamer's Root to make incense. You get four incense per particle, and they sell well. I mean, very well. Not only that, but if you have extra Tourmaline and Purifying Quartz, you can craft stronger incense, which sells for even more. This does not help out that much in the early game as you need particles for other things. But I earned 14 gold bars and 3100 silver from crafting these alone. Seriously, incense can make you a lot of money if you saved up a bunch of it. So that's pretty much it. The only money guide you'll ever really need to use. I usually craft horror weapons throughout my playthroughs and once you find out where shell horrors spawn you can craft them more often leading to even more money. Then I do the ornate chest farm as I explore the desert and pick up a couple good potions along the way. After that, I complete Rusted Vengeance questline which helps get you a ton of money just from killing enemies. And finally I head to Caldera for the town building. I enter one cave in that region at a time, grab all the loot, look for samples, and then drop everything off in town. Then I head back out and do the same with each and every cave in the region. You'll find so many goodies over there that you can't complete more than a single cave without being full. But that region is also quite difficult and requires you to have a pretty set up build. So not great in the early game. And finally, I will craft more incense when I get bored from clearing the caves. This has been my go-to process and it's gotten me all the way through the game on four different builds in Definitive Edition. Which is kind of funny considering they sort of nerfed the horror weapon farm in Definitive Edition. There used to be more shell horrors in that Cabal Wind Temple. Now there's only four. I've tried a tank build, a bow build, a gauntlet build, and a mage build. No matter what character I decided to go with, money was never an issue. And I typically end up having over 500 gold bars in my chest before even starting the new Sirocco questline. That's just from playing the game as intended and taking advantage of the crafting system. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too long for you guys, but this will pretty much be the most informative money guide you'll ever get. It shows every single step of the way just in case you feel like you can't do it. Getting silver is so so very easy in Outward, and hopefully this will help you feel the same way. Please consider hitting that like button if any of this helped you out, and I will see you next time.